Namaste, Namaskaram, Vanakam to all the P Guru audience. No need to repeat that it is always a delight to interact with P Guru audience because uh, many of their comments are very useful. I do go through the comments, some of them I respond also. Anyhow, today we will uh, talk about an interesting topic uh, regarding this uh, pension for government employees what is called the demand for old pension and uh, states like Punjab is announcing we, have, we will go back to old pension Chhattisgarh and even HP the uh, election promise by Congress is that they will revert to the old pension this is primarily for government employees let's be very clear about it India the employment structure is 83 to 85 percent of the Indians are self-employed or contract employees. Okay. They are not a part of any major government employment or the organized sector, namely your uh, Tata Steel and Infosys and uh, uh, Indusan Lever plus government. They constitute something like 13 to 15 percent of the employment scheme. So the government employment is relatively very small, but their uh, demands are very large and uh, their ability to extract significant amount of income is also very large because they are very well organized and they can, you know, sort of conduct agitation. Tamil Nadu, I was told that uh, uh, some of the headmasters and teachers earn as high as 75 to 80 uh, thousand per month. And still they would like to increase it another thing. One is not grudging, but one is only telling the percentage of the government uh, employment is relatively small, but the percentage of demand is very, very large. So that is first we should keep in the back of the mind. This pension or social security as it is called, primarily for people who are old age, that is who have you know, crossed the productive uh, part of their life and uh, say about 60 or, you know, 62, various countries have various type of uh, methods of, uh, basically that uh, during the lifetime, they are able to contribute to the economy, work hard and other thing. And so post uh, productive uh, years are over, it is expected some sort of a social security should be given. Basically, the people who are working currently are expected to fund or finance the requirement of people who have uh, old age or retirement and other thing at the family level or at a social level. This is uh, one simple, this is also defined as a uh, dependency ratio. How many people who are above 60, let's say, are sustained by people below 60? So, large number of people are getting now above 60. The life expectancy in many of the countries are reaching 80, Western countries particularly, during uh, due to development in science, uh, medicine and various other issues. US, uh, it's crossed 80. Japan, it is around 86. So, long period of time people are working. Uh, sorry, uh, people are uh, living after retirement. If you retire at 60 and 86 is the life expectancy, something like 26 years you have to be sustained after the retirement. And kindly note, after retirement, you are not in a position to contribute anything. Whatever you have done, it is prior to retirement. And this whole thing about old age issue became an important thing in the 19th century. 1889, if you remember, Bismarck introduced in Germany first social security uh, scheme, some sort of a pension scheme. At that time, of course, it was jokingly told uh, he made 65 as the age because uh, his age was 65, which is not true actually. Earlier it was 70, much later it became 65. And any of life expectancy at the time of introduction was something like 50, 55. So he was clever enough to keep the pensionable age above the life expectancy so that less number of people will be 
that's not the issue india also we had a pension scheme during the british time which uh, got enlarged and continued in the post independence period there are broadly two types of pension scheme one is called defined benefit other is called defined contribution and there are some in between hybrid schemes and other thing which has characteristics of both the uh, schemes anyhow defined benefit is simple scheme the employee doesn't contribute anything during his working life he just uh, retires and uh, number of years of service is taken into account and uh, the last pay drawn what is known as lpd is uh, looked at and by and large 50% of the last pay drawn is is uh, uh, pensionable uh, sum and uh, number of years of service is very important india it is you know in the british time onwards that has been uh, maximum of 33 years of service the reason is very simple in those days people entered into government service around 25 when you are you know uh, what one can call in a uh you know younger age you go to england and uh, you know how to hold the glasses then you become a uh, ics uh, imperial uh, service in those days civil service of britain and you come back to india and join the civil service at 25 58 used to be the uh, what you may loosely call the life expectancy as well as the retirement age so 33 years so some of that 33 number has been uh keep kept even if you put in uh, work more than 33 years it will be considered only for 33 years so number of years of service and the last pay drawn 50% of it that's amount and a portion of it you can take it in the form of lump sum at the time of retirement maybe for your daughter's marriage or constructing a house or something the remaining portion will be annuitized and will be provided on every year till your death and there is also a family pension that is after your death 50% of the amount will be given to your spouse as long as she is alive so this is the sort of a very scheme called a defined benefit in which the employee doesn't uh, contribute anything and it's a function of number of years he has put in in the government he seems to have worked very hard so he is compensated after retirement the other is called defined contribution where the employee contributes every month a sum amount let's say 10% of his pay the organization or the government contributes another 10% this is kept in a fund and this fund grows and at the end of your leaving the job or retirement whatever amount the fund has grown will be given to you if you want it in the form of annuity also it will be so the fund manager has to take care where to invest in equity or in debt or in other type of products and other thing and a good fund manager will be able to increase the corpus this is the idea behind it that's called defined contribution so most of the government and companies used to have defined benefit schemes and around 2000 there were large areas of uh, problem Alitalia used to advertise, uh, or British Airways, I think, that we also run airlines. <laughs> Primarily, we are a pension provider, and a Ford Motor Company at some point of time, uh, it was told that for every ten uh, dollar, what is their net profit? Something like six to seven dollar goes in the form of pension benefit and uh, salaries. So this is something which is uh, becoming a very big issue. and in india also it was a it became a very big issue many of the governments for instance tamil nadu government had 72% as salary and pensions around uh, you know 2017 there was some uh, discussion in the assembly and many states like kerala and other thing if you take salary pension and the interest it was nearing 100% there was practically no money available for any other developmental activity for the state government and similarly central pension benefits were also skyrocketing and uh, so many of the western countries the government moved from defined benefit to defined contribution 
and uh, defined a contribu contribution and uh, used to be kept in a fund and uh, some of these uh, uh, pension funds are very very large ones actually globally i am estimate is 20 to 25 tri trillion us dollar they may be having they are the ones who are investing all over the world other than that there is also what is known as the uh, sovereign wealth fund some of these governments create the fund like uh, you have it in singapore you have it in uh, uh, sweden norway and uh, these sovereign wealth funds are very very large and uh, they are also a uh, funded scheme if there are pension scheme they also play a role in terms of providing pension for the employees so this is the type of a so most of these the companies which could not move away from defined benefit to defined contribution came to grief including a lot of automobile companies in us because the unions were not accepting the contribution thing. why should we contribute and this and that and that type of an argument in india also same thing Many of the state government uh, were, you know, put into their scheme. Actually, 2004, January 1st onward, the scheme has become operative. 91 to so around, sorry, 93, one uh, Malotra committee, he was formerly a governor of Reserve Bank. He, under his uh, head, one committee was formed to study the insurance, which included, uh, because many of the insurance companies are providing this pensionary benefit, and then there was another report called Oasis, Old Age uh, Security. That was by Dave, who was formerly with the UTI. And uh, so these two reports facilitated the government to rethink about this whole pension thing. And uh, they began to uh, implement that 2004 onward. Some state government joined a bit late, another thing. And almost, you know, Bengal and uh, Tripura were resisting. And they also have to join at a later point of time. Tamil Nadu is peculiar. It has abolished the old pension system, but it has not joined PFRDA. It has created its own corpus and then it is uh, hoping to manage the funds. Anyhow, uh, what I call Tamil Nadu is in a Trishanku uh, position compared to many other government. Now, Himachal Pradesh Congress in its manifesto has told we will reverse it. Now, AAP is uh, uh, telling that they will reverse it, which I feel is suicidal. That would be a correct word I would use. Economically and financially, it will be suicidal for the country if we have to revert back to the old pension. For the simple reason, as I mentioned, the old pension, salary and interest cost of the state government were skyrocketing. Many of the cases like... Uh, Kerala, Punjab, Bihar and other thing. It was nearing something like 1990. Where is the money for any other activity? In terms of development and other thing. Assuming some of the state governments move in the direction, I only hope center doesn't uh, come forward to provide any uh, crutches or any uh, benefit actually. It is the, one shouldn't use such a strong word, but it is the funeral of the state government. It's the most stupid thing on the part of the state government to move back to the old pension. And similarly, as I told you, globally, some of these uh, companies which didn't uh, uh, go into the new pension system have to come to grief. Because the fact is life expectancy is becoming greater and greater. And a very small portion of these government employees have to be sustained in this fashion. Of course, another issue is, larger issue is uh, corruption and bravery. Large number of state government and central government, huge amount of corruption. So other than the salary, this is also contributing to their income. Somebody suggested actually lightheartedly, why don't we stop paying them any salary? Because anyhow they are, you know, uh, significantly earning in terms of this bribery and corruption. I recall a discussion in the latter part of the uh, last century, I think, or earlier part. Anyhow, this Maharashtra government abolished this, uh, what is that called, uh, interest rate uh, uh, taxes, Octroy. And there was a huge amount of uh, agitation and they told we are serving the people of Maharashtra and all that. That's a normal thing they say. Because actually the 
uh, hit was on their ability to earn income. Even today, bus or a van, when it crosses uh, one state to another, you have to pay some 200 rupee, 300 rupee bribery. It's not something uh, top secret or anything. Anyhow, then a large portion of the employees were on strike. If I recall that time, uh, Sharad Pawar was the chief minister or anyhow. I was uh, conducting a program and the finance secretary of the uh, then uh, that time or finance secretary or his assistant, I, I don't exactly recall, but uh, they were there. I was uh, discussing with them, uh, you are not uh, paying any salary. How are they managing? He <laughs> laughingly told, we decide uh, whom not to pay this uh, particular month and other thing. We know which uh, segment of population of government employees earns good amount of money from uh, outside. And for them, we don't pay. They don't make big noise and other thing. And uh, we go it in a sort of a cycle. This is the state of affairs in the uh, country. So there are a lot of criticism against uh, paying of regular uh, salary itself to people. And if they have to be paid pension of the old system, which will take substantial amount of the government revenues. So that is the type of a situation. I think the clamor for reverting to the older pension system is not appropriate. I always used to say, by and large in India, whenever a new change or reform has come, it has not been reversed, except in the case of that uh, form loss and other thing. I am sure that will also be introduced slowly. It's not going to be a permanent uh, reversal or anything. Many of the Latin American countries, because of agitation and all the things, they reversed it. And they are suffering a lot actually. We should never, our reforms take a lot of time actually. It doesn't take place overnight or anything. We never do any surgery. We do, we don't do the jatka method. We do halal method. Slowly we we constituted a committee, Malotra committee on insurance in 93, 94 they gave the report. Then an expert group was formed. Then a five, you know, uh, further uh, activating group was formed. Then further uh, the implementation group was, so many were, same thing again and again were repeated. Fortunately, because of the uh, Microsoft, you can change the word from uh, working group to expert group to implementing group and other thing and nothing changed. Around 2003-04, finally it was okayed and implemented. I, if I remember, P. Chidambaram used to be the finance minister at that time. So it takes a lot of time in India across several government in order to introduce a major reform. And fortunately so far, except as I told you the form laws, <coughs> economic uh, reforms have not been reversed at all. Private insurance companies were introduced. I am told there are something like uh, 22, 23 non-life as well as life insurance company. Within a short period of time, 2006, 7 they started, 7, 8 they started and then uh, by now. So there is a, a similarly about mutual fund, similarly about pension fund. So there may be demand from government employees and they are a very powerful pressure group, but I don't think uh, any government, whether it is Congress party or BJP or any other, uh, the DMK or SP or whatever be the, I don't think they should uh, accept for any change of going back. If at all, we should go forward. And uh, the 10%, 10% contribution growing it's a reasonable proposition in terms of, uh, and uh, we are an economy which is also growing over a period of time. Many states are wanting to become trillion dollar economy and other thing. So post retirement, there is no uh, need to uh, worry about it. And uh, there are people whom I know who have retired and who are continued to work till they are 70 and other. Our life expectancy is around 73, if I am right, and that is also increasing. So, there is no need to change anything. Only thing is, 
today also it is available the individuals have a uh, right to choose the type of a pension fund where they would like to their money to be kept and also how much to allocate for debt oriented scheme how much to allocate for equity oriented scheme in terms of risk profile and other thing. and that can be that freedom can be given there is absolutely no uh, difficulty on that so there is a important thing i would like to say reverting to old pension scheme will be suicidal for the economy as well as for our country i hope uh, because of this uh, political football this uh, fundamental fact is not ignored by various political leaders and uh, their uh, you know key ministers and uh, at others at the central and state level thank you very much